everyone. In today's video, I'm sharing how to integrate our three minds, that is the conscious, subconscious, and the superconscious mind. Now, the reason we want to work towards balance and integration is so we can reclaim our personal power, we can heal past trauma, pain, and suffering, change our negative thoughts and belief patterns, and become attuned to our soul. My intention with today's video is we'll start with an overview of the three minds. Next, we will discuss each mind in detail, how it gets conditioned, antidote to conditioning, and I will specifically focus on the conscious and subconscious mind. Next, we'll talk about ways in which the split between three minds can manifest, connection between different minds and the chakras, practical ways to claiming your personal power, and we'll wrap up with what truly lies at the heart of integrating these three minds. I've added timestamps in the description below, so feel free to skip forward. Now, each mind you see here represents a way of thinking. So at the most fundamental level, the question we are asking ourselves is, am I thinking with God mind or with my personality or am I simply reacting to situations in my life? Now, when we don't have awareness of these three minds, usually the subconscious is running the show. That is, we react rather than respond to things around us. We are thinking from our ego and are easily controlled by our emotions. Now, in most people, these three minds are not connected. If each ring here represents a mind, then these three rings are going to be separate at first. But as you start to develop self-mastery and become attuned to your soul, these rings start interlocking. And you really start feeling as if your soul is guiding you in your life. Now, our goal today is to learn how to interconnect these three minds, these three rings, so that if you were to ask them a question all of them would give you the same answer. And this goal is achieved when the subconscious mind becomes a humble servant of the conscious mind. And the conscious mind in turn becomes a humble servant of the superconscious mind. Now, a creative way to visualize these three minds is with this image. You can think of your conscious mind as the captain of the ship your subconscious mind as the shipmate below the deck, your superconscious mind as the North Star that is guiding you on your journey. So let's discuss each mind in detail. We will begin with the subconscious mind, the shipmate below the deck. Now this guy follows captain's orders. Whether those orders are rational or irrational, is immaterial. This guy always responds with, yes, sir. Now, this guy is interesting because even though he can't reason, he does have some incredible skills. As an example, he can work 24-7. He operates our physical body through the parasympathetic nervous system. He can create magic with the law of attraction principles. Because once this guy believes something as truth, you are bound to experience it in your life. You know, in hypnosis, as an example, when a person, say, is struggling with nicotine addiction and this person is given post-hypnotic suggestion, if his subconscious mind accepts that suggestion, then the personality, the person, will give up addiction. Like, that's how powerful the subconscious mind is. You can also think of this guy like a supercomputer, he can perform billions of computations per second and yet doesn't care what those computations are for. You can program it for inner peace or you can program it for inner violence. He doesn't care. Now, the downside with this guy, besides the fact he can't reason, is that he does come with a lot of baggage. And this baggage consists of all the experiences and memories you have had from the moment you were born and even other lifetimes. Like if you were to open these bags, you would find hard disks that store trillions of data bytes. 
all your feelings, your instinctual, your emotional reactions, they come from information that is stored on these hard drives. Your past memories of trauma, of abuse are also stored here even if you have totally forgotten them. Now through this guy, your subconscious mind, these painful memories are literally stored in the cells of your body. Now some people feel these memories but they don't know where they are stemming from, they don't know what caused them, and they get curious about it. Then there are people who try to shut down these memories through some form of coping mechanism like nicotine, food, sex, and the likes. Now imagine if a person doesn't know about his subconscious mind and how it works, then he's going to be a puppet at the hands of this guy, his subconscious mind. So let's talk about how this mind gets conditioned. Now, most of the conditioning happens between the ages of zero to seven, because at that time, a child's brain is not fully developed. At that age, children can't reason. They don't know good from bad. They haven't developed language skills, problem solving, and even critical thinking skills. So whatever a child hears from the adult around them, that's truth for them. Now, as a child, your subconscious mind, as an example, got programmed through your interactions with your parents, your grandparents, your friends, your relatives, your teachers, and the likes. Now, majority of us, we are carrying faulty thinking and faulty beliefs in our subconscious mind from those early interactions. In addition, if a child were to witness any traumatic event, say violence, shooting, death, be it on television or on streets, that is going to negatively program his subconscious mind. Similarly, repeated images of abuse or sex, that will negatively imprint the subconscious mind. If the bond between a child and his mother gets broken between the ages of zero to seven, that will again negatively condition the subconscious mind. Children that are groomed into negative self-image or low self-esteem will easily be controlled by their subconscious mind. Now, given how powerful the subconscious mind is, let's talk about how to consciously work with this mind so we are not controlled by its impulses. Number one is getting present to any trauma that you might have experienced in this life and no longer sweeping it under the rug. Acceptance is always the number one key in healing. Once you accept something, then you can seek professional help. You can learn tools to clear painful memories. Here, hypnosis, past life regression can be very supportive. Now, the subconscious mind, it stores all your fears. And so becoming aware of all your fears, even if they make no logical sense, can be helpful. You know, we access our subconscious mind when we shift into a calm state and we go inward. So making time for daily meditation can be supportive. And so is reflecting on questions like, where in my life am I playing the role of a victim? Where do I self-sabotage my efforts? Where am I acting out destructive behaviors? And then reverse engineer the associated negative belief and thought patterns. You know, it is only through continual reflection of your inner landscape that you will become aware of the contents of your subconscious mind. And our ultimate goal with the subconscious mind is that this guy, he becomes a humble servant of the captain of the conscious mind. Now moving to the most important person on the ship, the captain of the ship, and in our analogy, he represents the conscious mind. Now this is the mind that gives us the ability to use logic and reasoning before we make decisions. Now the reason this guy is the most powerful person on the ship is because he's the only one who has access to the navigational equipment. He can lead us to our destination. Without him, we are lost. Now, the reason the captain is the ultimate authority on the ship is because in a way, he's really responsible for the safety of passengers, of his crew. 
So when he says something, everyone listens, including this guy. In a way, we can also say that the captain is the master of the subconscious mind. Now, a captain attentively listens to everyone on the ship, including this guy, who relays messages through feelings and impulses. Now, the captain takes in all the information from this guy and then uses his reasoning skills to discern. If the information is not worth paying attention to, then that impulse or feeling is not acted upon. Now, this ability to choose and discern, that is our captain's superpower. Because really, you know, we can't afford our captain to get distracted with unnecessary details or through painful memories of the past from the subconscious mind, or else our ship can go off course, or worse, our ship might get caught up in a storm. So our captain's ability to choose which thoughts, impulses, he will give meaning to which one he will reject. That's what makes him powerful. And you know, in a way, each one of us are a captain of our own ship, which is our life. So really contemplate whether you are skillfully steering your ship to safe heavens, or have you succumbed to the whims and fancies of your subconscious mind. And here I want to emphasize that we are not denying the messages from our subconscious mind. We are not sweeping them under the rug. We are not pretending we didn't hear them. None of that. Instead, we deeply listen to the messages that the subconscious mind is relaying to us. And then we use discernment to gauge whether or not to act upon those impulses. Now, like your subconscious mind, the conscious mind can also get negatively conditioned. So children learn through observation and their early interactions really sets the tone for their adult experiences. So as an example, say a little girl, she sees her mother playing the role of a victim and abdicating personal power and responsibility. Chances are when the little girl grows up, she emulates the same experiences in her life, thinking they are normal, they are expected, unless she learns otherwise. Now, our conscious mind can also get conditioned through outside influences, be it social media or even through pop culture. Like if you were to imitate, say, some celebrities, or you were to blindly follow and trust some online information or even news for that matter without your due diligence, without using your critical thinking skills. In this case, your conscious mind may get conditioned by outside forces. You know, toxic positivity is another way through that can negatively condition the conscious mind. For example, when you believe that no matter how dire or difficult a situation gets, you should always maintain a positive mindset, that's unhealthy in the long run. You know, positive thinking is a must while also clearing the negative contents stored in your subconscious mind. That's a powerful combination we want to aim for. The good news is that the conscious mind can be deconditioned through re-education, discipline and corrected development. So for example, learning to control your impulses, learning to become a safe person, building trust in yourself, continually disregarding your negative thoughts, those will go a long way in deconditioning the conscious mind. Now, an easy way to protect your conscious mind from the contents of the subconscious mind is to put a bubble around your subconscious mind. This is to ensure that all the negative memories will stay contained within this bubble. Similarly, you can protect the conscious mind from outside influences. How? by imagining a protective bubble around your body. Now, our goal with the conscious mind is that number one, it reprograms the subconscious by changing negative thoughts into positive, life-affirming thoughts. And next, we want the conscious mind to stay aligned with the North Star. In other words, we want the conscious mind to become a humble servant of the superconscious mind. Now, moving along to the superconscious mind, this is the mind that is represented by the North Star in our analogy. 
Now this mind is also called Christ mind, higher self, soul, monad. And for simplicity, I have clubbed all these terms under the umbrella of superconscious mind. Now this is the mind that can also be considered your inner voice that gives you your morals, your integrity and ethics. And the important thing to remember here is that this mind can help us only if we ask for assistance. It doesn't interfere with our free will, with our free choice. And so every single day you can ask this mind to help you say in clearing your subconscious beliefs. Or you can request it to upgrade your discernment skills. You know, anytime you're feeling stuck, you can say something as simple as, Beloved God, I want to release my negative belief patterns. Please guide me. Please show me the path in ways I can't miss it. Now, a signpost that you are aligning with your higher self is when your mind starts surrendering. Because by its very nature, the personality doesn't like to surrender. It wants full control, right? But when the captain of the ship and the North Star, they come into phase alignment, we develop spiritual attitude. Now we are starting to own our power and also surrender to God simultaneously. Now the superconscious mind can be contacted through meditation, dreams, journaling, intuition, silence, and even contemplation. You can also contact this mind by consciously clearing the pain and trauma stored in the subconscious layers and by truly committing to self-mastery. What we want from the superconscious mind is that it guides both the conscious and subconscious mind like a trustworthy parent. Now the three minds also correspond to the chakras in the body. As an example, the first chakra represents the unconscious mind, the third chakra represents the conscious mind, and for simplicity's sake, we can say the higher chakras represent the superconscious mind. Now when you work on the higher chakras, exclusively, almost at the expense of lower chakras, that will only take you so far. Because imagine if you were to construct a tall building. The first thing you would ensure is a strong foundation because you do know that otherwise your building could collapse. Similarly, if you want to reach those higher states of consciousness and be able to sustain yourself there, then you've got to commit to inner work. Now, there are a number of ways in which the split between these three minds can manifest. So, for example, some people over-identify with their conscious mind. They are usually obsessed with power, with control. They don't feel the need to explore subconscious mind or God or might not believe in such concepts. Then there are people who over-identify with their subconscious mind. Maybe they got involved in hypnosis, got excellent results, and now they think that the subconscious mind is the key to the kingdom, not realizing that the strongest force in their lives is their conscious mind. Then there are people who see life through the lens of their conscious and superconscious mind and outrightly reject subconscious mind. These people may be spiritually developed, but they lack psychological development. Then there are light workers who over identify with the spiritual life. They want to embody God's spirit, but don't want to commit to their inner work. They don't want to commit to making this life in this reality work. Now, the thing is that when you over identify with one mind, then you are missing out on extremely valuable information from other minds creating an imbalance. Now, so far, we have discussed three main actors in our story, the shipmate, captain, and the North Star. Now, I want to bring your attention to the captain who acts like a rainbow bridge between our subconscious and superconscious mind. Only the captain here has the ability to use logic, discernment. He's the only one who can directly influence our daily behaviors and choices. And this guy, this captain, enforces his decisions through personal power or willpower. In other words, 
If this captain didn't use his personal power, chaos would ensue because then your subconscious mind would push you around. You might hesitate in making important decisions. You might not stay aligned with your true north. So in a way, we can say that the key to psychological and spiritual health is the development of personal power and willpower. Now you can also think of willpower as the enforcing agent of your conscious mind. It's kind of like the choice of attitude. Is the captain going to have an attitude of strength or weakness? For example, deciding you will go for a run at 7 a.m. and then following through with it. Now you are enforcing your personal power. You know, when you start owning your power, you feel far more centered, far more grounded. And when you use it consistently over a period of time, you develop something magical called discipline. And owning your power is, you know, what really allows our conscious mind to skillfully navigate this life without getting overwhelmed by the subconscious mind and even outside forces. Now, at the heart of integration of these three minds is discipline and correct development. This is how we develop our conscious mind. Then there's psychological development. This is how we reprogram the subconscious mind and spiritual development. This is how we access the superconscious mind. Now I've shared a lot of information in this video. So let's quickly discuss some practical steps you can take to integrate these three minds. So number one, when you wake up in the morning as a suggestion, visualize a protective bubble first around your subconscious mind and then around your body. Next, you can ask your superconscious mind to guide you throughout the day, be it with your work, your family, or anything else you might want help with. Then throughout the day, keep the promises you make to yourself. This is how you will build trust in yourself. You will learn to apply personal power and over time, develop discipline. Next, you can also repeat an affirmation like, my subconscious mind is my servant friend. In closing, the image I want to leave you with is this. Your conscious mind is like a conductor of a grand symphony called your life. You get to choose what gets played in the theater of your life. The power of choice is yours and I trust you will use it wisely. Thank you so much for your time today. As always, please only take what resonates, discard the rest, and I will see you in the next video.